Good morning, guys. It's Wednesday morning. This is our five for five. I um, hope you guys have had a great week so far. In our reading for Ironworks this past week, we we're actually in the book of Philippians chapter two, and that passage has been on my heart this week. Uh, let me share the passage with you guys this morning. It's actually Philippians chapter two, verses one through four, if you want to follow along. It says, if then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. In this section of the letter, Paul is encouraging the reader to focus on humility. And this is something that was actually looked down on in the culture that was receiving this letter originally. To be humble was to accept that you were not as good as someone else. Uh, it was kind of like resigning yourself to a lower social status. Uh, and this was the complete opposite of what the social norms were when Paul wrote the letter originally. And guys, if we're honest with ourselves, not that much has changed since then. The concept of humility, which is often covered in the New Testament, is still seen as a kind of sign of weakness. Society tells us to look out for number one. A business coaches us to, to do whatever it takes to get ahead. Uh, the media tells us that we are the most important thing around. And for years, people have bought into that. And look where it's taken us. Paul calls the believers in Philippi to live a life in opposition to what the world says is normal. And instead of focusing on your wants, focus on your neighbor's needs. Instead of trying to get glory for every little thing that you do, Try to let your contribution slip under the radar. Let other people get the praise sometimes and know that you've done what you were called to do, even if it doesn't noticed. The rest of this section in the letter gives us the greatest example of this behavior ever, which is Jesus. When he came down from his own glory, he took on humble flesh, carried our sins ultimately to the cross. That's the perfect example of what it means to live a humble life. I've found in my own life that when scripture calls us to live countercultural, it's a powerful place to lean into obedience. When our life is in step with culture, we blend in. Uh, yeah, it's safe there, it's comfortable, and sometimes we can even walk in step with culture and not compromise our faith. But many times, when we take a stand that we're called to take in scripture, it's going to put us at odds with culture. In those moments, we stand out. Uh, when we're able to do it the way Paul explains it here, in love, united in spirit, and focused on one purpose, people are going to take notice of that. Living out humility at work, at home, even in the middle of competition, those are areas where we can show Jesus to a world that is too busy fighting for their own glory to realize how lost they really are. Because I want to encourage you this week to be humble, to think of others more than you think of yourself. And in your own small way, model Jesus to a world that very much needs him right now. I hope you guys have a great week, and I'm going to be praying for you to have opportunities to be bold in your humility this week. Can't wait to see how it goes. We'll talk to you later.